Hey everyone, it's Simone Watson, and this is the last video of my countdown of my top 61 most anticipated books of 2018. So I have done numbers 61 through 51, 50 through 41, 40 through 31, 30 through 21, and 20 through 11. So this video is about the top 10. Woohoo! Okay, so I thought about doing honorable mentions before getting to the top 10, but I've realized that is a lot of books to kind of throw at you at once, if that makes sense. So I believe what I'll do with my honorable mentions is divide them into seasons and then just do like some anticipated books of each season, okay? So here we go with the top 10. Ah, okay. So number 10 is Tyler Johnson Was Here by Jay Coles. This book will be out on March 20th. Um, and in Tyler Johnson Was Here, there's a pair of twins, Marvin and Tyler, they are black. And Tyler goes to a party and then he goes missing and marvin finds out a little bit later that tyler was shot by a police officer and so the book deals with the after effect of that and how marvin and their mother are trying to grieve even as tyler um has sort of become like a hashtag you know but to them like he's a person you know um so this just wow this just sounds so good you know it has to do with the Black Lives Matter movement, and there are definitely, you know, hashtags that are associated with the Black Lives Matter movement. Not that those hashtags are not important, but it's just here we get to see this from the perspective of someone who is actually, who has actually lost a family member. You know, I'm not saying that, oh, he's being objectified by everyone because he's a hashtag. I didn't mean it like that, but it's just like, this is just going to be so affecting seeing it from the perspective of a family member of the person who got shot. Um... Also, I'm trying not to talk about covers too much in these videos because I told you guys I was going to show you the covers and then I ended up not doing that, so I'm sorry. But this cover is amazing. It shows a black boy, either Marvin or Tyler, and there are some flowers. And I just love it because flowers are associated with emotion and grief and things that are not, partic are not usually expected of black men. Black men are expected to be tough. Not that emotions make you not tough but black men are kind of expected not to grieve and not to feel emotions and stuff and like sad like not to be sad and so i love that this book cover is like showing grief like a visual representation of grief over the black boy that's on the cover to kind of symbolize that like it's okay for black men to grieve and that black men do grieve you know so i love that okay so number nine is Someday Somewhere by Lindsay Champion, and this will be out on April 3rd. So this is about a girl named Dominique. Yeah, she is a high school junior and goes to this show um, and she sees this guy playing the violin um, and she is just like fascinated by him, right? I think he's a college student or like college age. And so later on, she goes like around that area, like pretending to be an NYU student so she, so, she can, so she can meet up with him. And they have this like whirlwind romance, but at the same time, he is obsessed with mastering a specific sonata. And I love this concept because a lot of, like I feel like the stories of obsession we have seen or on this list, or we've seen like in 2018, like lots of stories where people are like, they want to be the best at this craft or they're just like obsessed with this craft. But here we have that and romance in the same book and I want to see how those things affect each other. So I am really, really looking forward to that. Okay, number eight is The Final Six by Alexandra Monier and this will be out on March 6th. Um, I believe this author is Iranian American, which is really cool. Um, so this is about two teens who are competing among a group of 24 to become um, one of the six people who will be chosen to scout out a new planet, either a new planet or Jupiter's moon, because both of those things are mentioned in the synopsis, so maybe both. Um, they're going to scout out a new planet for humans to go to because Earth is dangerous now, and they have to do all these challenges to compete against the other 22 people. and. Yes, people competing in challenges and they're going to go to space. Just yes. 
Um, it sounds a little bit similar to a book that came out this year called, or sorry, last year, ah, called Dare, I think it's called Dare Mighty Things. Forgot the author's name, but that's also competing to go to space. So thumbs up for that. Okay, number seven is I Am Still Alive by Kate Marshall, and this will be out on July 24th. I'm a little bit surprised that I have a book like this on the list because it is a like single person survival story and I usually don't like those. But the way that this one is described sounds really, really good. So it's about a girl named Jess. Her mother dies and so she moves in with her father and he's a survivalist. But then her father dies or like someone murders him, I think. And so now she's all alone having to survive like in the woods or mountains or woods on the mountains or something. She's all alone having to survive with her father's like survivalist supplies and stuff. And it just sounds so intense and like bad booty. And I just love it. Like I, I, and I think they may say, they may have said that there's like some external threat or like some people trying to get out to get her or something. And I just love this, you know? So back in elementary school, I definitely didn't like Hatchet when we had to read that, but maybe my tastes have changed. And now I just want a solo survival story. I don't know. Okay, so number six is Where I Live by Brenda Ruthner. Um, this will be out on February 27th. So this is about a homeless girl named Lyndon who is in high school and she hides her homelessness from everyone. Um, she actually lives at school. Um, but one day a girl, like another girl at her school comes in with um, a bloody lip. Yeah, another girl comes in with a bloody lip and Lyndon this hits close to home for her, and so she wants to help this girl, but if she helps her, she risks being found out, um, her, you know, getting her secret found out that she's homeless. Um, wow, okay. So I mentioned, you know, there were homeless people in Winterfolk, which I believe was number 11, and how like, you know, we don't necessarily see a lot of perspectives from like homeless teens, um, and this just, the stakes of it are like so the stakes the stakes the internal conflict i just i love it and i i feel like i'm gonna be really emotional when reading this and that's what you want you want books that are gonna make you feel something right so yeah oh yeah that was a thumbs up <laughs> okay number five is i stop somewhere by t.e carter by t.e carter this will also be out on February 27th, so both that one and where I live. This is about a girl who no one really pays attention to at school, um, and then she is assaulted, and it says in the description that she has to watch other assaults take place, and like no one is like finding her. Um, I don't, like she's trapped somewhere and has to watch other assaults take place. At first, I thought that this was a Lovely Bones type of thing where, like, she was a ghost and had to see this stuff happening. Um, I'm quite sure it's actually not like that from reading the description again, but I'm not sure where she would be trapped and have to see other assaults. I'm not sure exactly what's going on here, and I think they were intentionally mysterious about it, but um, it is stated in the description that it deals with, like, rape culture, and it just sounds like a... It just sounds, I've said hard hitting so many times, but this really sounds hard hitting and like something that just could be an emotional something, you know what I'm saying? So yes. Also, I've heard good things about it from people who have read it, like advanced copies and stuff. They've said that it was really, really good. So um, number four is A Girl Like That by Tanaz Batana. Um, this will be out on February 27th as well. So three in a row on February 27th. Also, Tanaz Batana is Indian. So um, yeah, she's a she's a woman of color. So woohoo. Okay. Um, a girl like that takes place in Jeddah, Jeddah, I think Jeddah, um, Saudi Arabia. Um, and there's a girl named Zarin. And so basically Zarin has this really bad reputation but at the beginning of the book, she is found dead in a car accident with a, uh, a, a boy, like a guy. And 
no one really expected the guy to be with a girl like that because again she has this reputation this somewhat negative reputation and so they're dead but then it like goes back i guess and unfold like the story unfolds and you know like what events led to that and i think it's very sad that the characters are dead at the beginning but i really can't wait to like you know, of course, sad books can be really good books. And I think this is going to be a really good book because I can't wait to see where it goes and where the story goes. I really like the cover. I know I'm mentioning the cover again. But um, the fact that it's called A Girl Like That, I think this is really going to delve into, like, reputations and, like, how people get judged, like, how women get judged um, in certain societies. And I just am so freaking excited for that. So yeah, those three all coming out on the same day. Uh, ooh, we've gotten to the top three. So for number two, there is a tie, okay? So the first one I'll talk about for number two is Will Fly Away by, um, I believe it's by Brian Bliss. I forgot to write down his name, but I believe it's by Brian Bliss. This was about two best friends named Toby and Luke. The way it looks on the Goodreads synopsis, it's like they have a similar to like a brotherly relationship where one of them has always protected the other one. And then like they 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 have drifted apart. But we're I think we're seeing the story later after they've drifted apart. And where we're seeing it, someone is on death row. I don't know who's on death row. I would guess it's one of these two teens, but it might be someone else. Um, but the story is told through letters from death row and it is told in third person, like in a third person narrative. Um, I just wanna know how did this person get on death row? And I feel like no matter what, it's gonna be a tearjerker and the whole thing with the best friendships and people that you care about so much, but then you like drifted apart and then like you can't save them from everything. And it just, oh my gosh, I don't even, I don't even know what happens there, but I just feel I just feel emotions about this and I haven't read it yet so yes the other book that is tied for number two you might have heard of and it is children of blood and bone by Tony Adeyemi oh my gosh oh my gosh oh my gosh children of blood and bone by Tony Adeyemi it it made a huge buzz earlier this year because it was um acquired um Tomi Adeyemi is someone she like does writing coaching. She does a bunch of things and she is Nigerian American and she wrote this book that is fantasy and it's based on Northern Africa and Western Africa. And I've read a sample of it. I was blessed enough to get a sample of it. There was a digital arc sample of it and it was so good. I just, everything, that I want in a fantasy novel is in this book. It's about two black girls that are trying to like save the, how would I even explain it? So basically there's this society, right? Where there used to be magic and there were these magical people called magi um, and they have white hair. You can tell they're magi because they have white hair. Um, but then the magic like disappeared and around the same time, a lot of magi got killed. And our main character, Zeli, I think it's Zeli, or Zeli, her mother got killed, and now there's no magic anymore, um, and for years the magic has been just, it doesn't exist in, anymore, right? But then, through a, a, a turn of events, Zeli ends up trying to get the magic back, along with a princess um and they it's just so great and the capital of the nation where they live is called uh i think it's called lagosi i'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it but it looks just like lagos which is the capital the the name of it looks just like lagos which is the capital of nigeria so i'm just so excited and the book just deals with so many things and i don't even know how much i should say about it because i read the sample but it's just so good it's just so good and it's just everything i want in a fantasy novel and i'm just so excited oh my gosh oh my gosh oh my gosh oh my gosh so yes, that is that. And finally, we are at number one. Okay, so number one is Social Creature by Tara Isabella Burton. 
This will be out on June 5th. This is about a poor woman or girl. I believe it's an adult novel. So this poor woman who lives in, a uh, young woman who lives in New York City. And she kind of just, she knows how to like get by and all that kind of stuff. But then she meets this rich woman and they become friends. And the poor woman, whose name is Louise, uh, Louise, Louise, sorry, Louise and the rich, the, the rich woman's name is Lavinia. So Louise starts to like really want to be a part of this glamorous world that Lavinia has introduced her to. So she's, or to which Lavinia has introduced her. She's just like so caught up in this and this glamor and she doesn't want it to end and she just wants to like fit in with the rich people. And I don't know exactly what else is going to happen, but I'm getting some like Great Gatsby vibes. I'm getting some, I don't know, it's just like, just the idea of being like so dazzled, you know, by like someone that just seems like so, I don't know, perfect and like the life that you want and then you're just getting caught up in this life and then you just don't want it, don't want it to stop. And basically it was saying that Louise doesn't want the party to end or something like that. I don't know what that means, but I'm here for it. So yeah, just the feeling that that description evokes in me or that, that, that feeling that it brings to mind is something that I'm very, very excited to read about. So yes. So thank you all so much for watching. And I didn't think I would be this emotional, but I'm like, oh my gosh, that is it. I am done with my 61 most anticipated books of 2018. Ah, okay. So um, yes, I will see you for my next video. And please let me know in the comments if any of these are books that you have also been anticipating or if they are books that you haven't heard of, but now, you know, now you're interested. Um, or just tell me what books you're looking forward to this year because I would love to know, okay? So yes, thank you for watching and I will see you tomorrow. No, tomorrow is Friday. So most likely I will see you on Monday. Okay, bye.